Why do you think we're drawn to these papers, even though we can flip through them in the supermarket line and think, well, that's fake. Yeah, that's embellished. That's not a real photo. But what is it in us as humans that we're drawn to this? Oh my God. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I think that would take probably a, an anthropologist to answer that question. Um, somebody who really understands. I mean, I think this is fundamental human nature. Like this goes back to Shakespeare and the Greeks and the Romans before that. And actually you can even probably take it back to like the cave paintings of Pompeii where it's like the, the sexual acts of the rich and famous were displayed for all to see. You know, I think this is part of human nature. We're, we're drawn to the lurid. We're drawn to the, um, the seemingly unattainable. We're drawn to the um, salacious. I think it's, you know, Jung would talk about this. I think this is like, this is the shadow side. Um, and I think we're seeing now that while it's no different from cave painting times, we just have so many more outlets for it that it's everywhere you look. You know, our culture is kind of, it's kind of like consumed the culture in a way, this obsession. And, uh, you know, it's not going back in the bottle. Well, you talked about in the film that um, Generoso Pope, the, the founder of the Enquirer, had said that the ideal reader was, was it Missy Smith in Kansas? Yeah. And it was this, you know, good suburban housewife, you know, probably, who knows, went to church on Sunday. I'm, I'm adding that part. But, and then there was a part of her that just enjoyed sitting down at the end of the week, reading through this and knowing that these celebrities or these different people were just like her in some ways. Do you think that reader has changed? The person who's consuming this has changed? I don't. I don't think she's changed. I think that General Pope was really uh, kind of a, a marketing genius to have identified the ideal inquirer reader back in the late 60s and early 70s and to really understand almost everything about her. You know, he understood what she would want to talk about with her girlfriends at the beauty parlor. She understood what she would want to show to her husband when she got home. Um, and she also, he also understood what her husband would want to read. He called it a Hey Martha. He would pick up the inquiry, would read about another UFO invasion in Roswell, and he would yell across the hall, Hey Martha, you've got to read this. This is, you know, there's a three headed alien that landed in Roswell. Um, so, you know, he, he understood all that. And I don't think that that has changed so much. I think what the Enquirer did really well was blend all these different stories into one publication so that the reader kind of, in a way, was convinced that they were getting things that were good for them. Miracle, miracle cures, fad diets, all that kind of stuff. Stuff that like piqued their, their curiosity of the supernatural, you know? A Madonna that has, you know, cries blood, you know, um, uh, a talking dog you know, pigeons that communicate with each other, um, all, that, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then all of the celebrity stuff that people have been obsessed with forever. Um, so he created that perfect formula. I don't think that formula has changed. Um, and I think everyone who has bought the Inquirer since and controlled the Inquirer since has understood that. I'd say the difference now is that the, the current, you know, in the Trump era, you know, the people who ran, the powers that be who ran the Inquirer recognized that Missy Smith in Kansas City, who was the ideal Inquirer reader, was also a voter and had political power. And rather than feed her miracle cures and fad diets and what Lonnie Anderson and Burt Reynolds were doing, they were feeding her political propaganda. That's much more dangerous. When do you think that changed with like the Reagan era? I remember seeing a lot of the Reagans on, on the front of the Enquirer? Never negatively. No? Okay. I mean, you know, maybe there was a story about Ron, or maybe there was a story about Patty, you know, going off the rails or something like that, but they were not super regular features. The Enquirer did not really touch politics until Gary Hart. Uh, and that's okay. really when it happened. <laughs> um, when they realized that a politician could be as scathing and scandalous as, as the most scathing and scandalous celebrity. So 